Continuing with the sentiment of rationality in The Will to Believe and Other Essays by William James, we saw at the outset that rationality meant only unimpeded mental function. Impediments that arise in the theoretic sphere might perhaps be avoided if the stream of mental action should leave that sphere sometimes and pass into the practical. Let us therefore inquire what constitutes the feeling of rationality in its practical aspect, etc., etc. A definition of the world which will give back to the mind the free motion which has been blocked in the purely contemplative path may so far make the world seem rational again. So you can try to achieve uh, the sentiment of rationality by pure theoretical simplicity, explaining everything under a single heading. Or you can try this other approach, the empirical approach, where not only do you recognize the... Uh, the world as it appears to us in our experience, where things are not all just uh, seemingly different manifestations of the same reality, but also you try to achieve a practical rationality, a rationality that achieves that uh, much-needed, unobstructed character of thought by practical means, not merely theoretical. Achieve thought that has no obstructions in its guidance of human life. Not thought that has no obstructions in our sitting and thinking uh, as philosophers in their offices and armchairs about the world, but human beings living in the world whose lives in the world are guided by principles that produce unobstructed thought in our action. There is nothing improbable in the supposition that an analysis of the world may yield a number of formulae, all consistent with the facts. Which sort of thoughts, which sorts of formulae for explaining the world are going to be not only consistent with the observable facts, but most able to produce unobstructed thought in the form of thought that guides human action in the world. In physical science, different formulae may explain the phenomena equally well, the one fluid and the two fluid theories of electricity, for example. Why may it not be so with the world? Why may there not be different points of view for surveying it, within each of which all data harmonize, of which the observer may therefore either choose between or simply accumulate one upon another? We need an understanding of the world which will produce unobstructed free thought, a feeling of satisfaction with our ideas of the world, and that feeling of satisfaction can be achieved not by pure Occam's razor parsimony, reducing everything to uh, one thing, but perhaps just as well by finding the thoughts that guide action in the world best. And it turns out that the, the mere physical facts as we observe them can be explained in more than one way. Which way should we choose to believe? Well, James is going to suggest the way that makes the most practical sense is perfectly acceptable. A Beethoven string quartet, this is a beautiful uh, critique of a certain kind of materialistic philosophy. A Beethoven string quartet is truly, as someone has said, a scraping of horses' tails on cats' bowels may be exhaustively described in such terms. But the application of this description in no way precludes the simultaneous applicability of an entirely different description. Just so, a thoroughgoing interpretation of the, world's in term, of the world in terms of mechanical sequence is compatible with its being interpreted teleologically, for the mechanism itself may be designed. We can describe the world as a bunch of physical facts, but we can also describe it as having a purpose, just as you can describe a Beethoven symphony uh, in purely physical terms based on the animal parts that went into making the musical instruments. Or you can describe it in not purely physical terms by recognizing the purpose of it. Now, purpose is crucial. James, I don't think I'm going to read anything here, but James, for the next uh, one, two, three, four paragraphs and probably following, is going to argue that we need a we need an account of the world that will allow us to act with a view towards the future. We have to be able to recognize purpose and be able to recognize that human action can contribute to that purpose. He he draws from, in fact, David Hume and early British empiricism for a few paragraphs, uh, arguing that um, 
the feeling of rationality, the perception of rationality, the sentiment of rationality that he's been talking about has been understood by early empiricist philosophers, rather has been consistently understood by empiricist philosophers to involve custom, uh, to involve a customary connection of one thing with another. And in particular, James emphasizes a customary connection of what we do with its expected consequences. So he's trying to uh, tell us that we may rationally believe we may rationally believe in purpose, because a mere uh, physical description of the facts as we are acquainted with them is consistent with the additional description that there is a purpose to this world. Uh, there is a purpose to our lives, and a proper understanding of rationality at least on the empirical conception, requires us to be able to customarily connect one thing with another, in particular, our actions with their expected consequences. So purpose in human action and the purpose of life itself, these are purposes James is interested in uh, preserving. Well, uh, he's interested in preserving, no, he's interested in recognizing the rationality of a system of belief which recognizes the purpose of life and which enables us to act with purpose, to act with purpose towards the purpose of life as we understand it. Uh, this, this should be able to achieve the, sen the sentiment of rationality quite as well as a uh, perfectly simplistic account that uh, has maximum parsimony, that explains everything according to uh, a single perspective. Uh, a perspective, uh, an analysis of the world which enables us to act with purpose, believing in a purpose for reality that is entirely consistent with the facts, is something which can produce that unobstructed thought, that freedom of thought, which is, uh, which constitutes rationality. More in subsequent videos.